All right, bless everybody. Father, we thank you for this evening. Lord, we thank you for all you're doing. We thank you, Father, for your mercies and your grace, your loving kindness, those tender mercies. We thank you for it, Father. Lord, we thank you for fighting for your people. Lord, we thank you for being a wall of fire and the glory in the midst of us, Lord. You baptize us fresh and new with your spirit. And bring unto us a reviving, renewing, refreshing, restoring, rebuilding, rejuvenating time with you, Father. For in your presence there is joy. And in your presence there is comfort and hope. And we thank you for that fullness of joy and the abundance of it. Jesus, you said that, that our joy would be full and that the world can't take that joy. We keep our focus on you. We thank you for the joy that you've given to us. And I pray, Father, that you bless those listening. I pray you bless them with the presence of your spirit may the angels seek into what is going on as we worship you lord we pray that and ask father that you would inhabit the praises that you would inhabit and dwell among us and be our god and we thank you for being sovereign el shaddai god almighty the sovereign one. We praise you and we love you. Thank you, Father. And Lord, we pray that you help us tonight as we enter into this time of worship that you would use my wife and I as vessels, anoint what we do, anoint our lips with your spirit, Lord. May we hear of your spirit of prophecy, Jesus, and release that which you want released. May we hear the word of edification for your church, your beloved bride. May we all get closer to you and more prepared for your return. Because we have the hope of your return, we purify ourselves. Lord, have grace upon us in this process of sanctification. That we walk in the spirit and not fulfill the desire of the flesh. For the old man is dead, and his ways are done. But in Christ there is a new creation. And we have obtained this righteousness and right holy standing before you, God, with the precious blood. The blood that speaks a better covenant than that of old and continues to speak. We thank you for the blood that was poured out upon the mercy seat there in the heavens. We thank you, Jesus, for offering that. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Welcome to the stream. God bless everybody. And uh, been studying a lot from John chapter 14 through 16 today and yesterday. And I would encourage you to do this as well because you really get a deeper understanding of the Father. Because that's how it began when, I believe it was, it was it Philip, I'm not for sure which one it was, Philip, when, which one it was, said to Jesus, show us the Father. And he said, have I, I've been with you so long and you, you say, show me the Father. Well, then Jesus takes and takes in our gospel 14, 15, and 16 of John, Jesus goes into the explanation. And you find many beautiful things that he teaches of the Father. He being the husband, and Jesus is the vine, and we are the branches. And you find just this beautiful, beautiful place of relationship established to the Father through Jesus. And we find about the praying, asking the Father in the name of Jesus. And we know there's a lot of that we can go in on that to understand the power that's in his name of access to the Father. 
You see, when Jesus was on this earth, who did he pray to? He prayed. To, he didn't pray to himself, did he? No. He prayed to the Father. And when he was on this earth, people came to him for prayer and asked him to pray for them. And Jesus prayed to the Father in that way. And Jesus said that in that day, he speaks of in John 16, that day he's referencing to is that when he's with the Father and he's no longer on this earth, that we would ask the Father in, in his name. But Jesus would not uh, go before the Father in that way of asking for us. It's up to us to ask the Father in his name. I hope that makes sense. But read it from John 14 through John chapter 16, and you'll get a really deep understanding. Just meditate on it. And uh, it's a beautiful thing, the relationship with the Father that we have. Amen. You, you don't mean that Jesus doesn't pray Correct. for us. Jesus is continually making intercession for us to the Father. But we ask the Father in Jesus' name. And so that's what Gary's trying to say. Is And you'll find that in John chapter 14, 15, and 16, I believe. Is that right? Thank you, Jesus, for your continual intercession. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercy. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace that we do not deserve. Thank you, Jesus. You are wonderful. You're the counselor. You're the mighty God, the Emmanuel. And we thank you for loving us. We thank you for this night of worship, of prayer, praise, thanksgiving. We thank you, Lord, for having your way here on earth, even as it is there in your heaven, is our prayer. Lord, will you forgive every one of us of every sin, known and unknown, that there be no hindrance, no delay, no distractions of going into your chambers, Lord. Going into the chambers of your heart, going into the holy of holies. Kadosh, kadosh, kadosh. Kadosh, kadosh, kadosh. We welcome everyone online tonight that's going to be joining us that will... Uh, also tune in later to the archive. Some people can't be on with us at this time. And so we just want to also welcome you who will tune in later. We love you. We appreciate you. We welcome you to worship with us to these recordings. And we just pray that the Holy Father just visits you with his signs, wonders, miracles, all of us. In your signs, wonders, and miracles, Father, we need you to visit us in your presence, in your love, in your glory. We're hungry, we're thirsty, we're needy for you. Many of us are desperate for you, for miracles in our lives, our ministries, our families. And Father, you are the miracle worker, and we say, in the name of Jesus, Father, will you work and speak and do the miracles your children need that we need tonight? In Jesus' name, Father, will you do them? And we thank you. We're just children. Father, you are almighty God. And we thank you. Amen, we do. Bless you, Raj. Bless you, Lisa. Bless those of you who are online. God bless you. Please feel free to leave in your praises to Jesus, prayer request, and fellowship with the Lord through the broadcast. Amen. And each other.
unto your land. You have brought back the captivity of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people. You have covered all their sin. You have taken away all your wrath. You have turned yourself from the fierceness of your anger. Turn us, O oh God of our salvation, and cause your anger toward us to cease. Thank you, Jesus. Sing aloud unto God our strength. And make a shall be built up forever. Your faithfulness shall you establish in the very heavens.
Awake, sultry and hark. I myself will awake her. I will praise you, O Lord, among the people, and I will sing praises unto you among the nations. For your mercy is great above the heavens, and your truth reaches unto the clouds.
Thank you, Jesus. I want to share some word with y'all in John chapter 16. Some very interesting things. These are, this is written in red. This is the words of Jesus to his disciples. And we are also, when we're born again and become children of God, we are disciples of Jesus. So this word is directly for us as well. And here he's talking in John 16. He's saying, these things I have spoken to you that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think he offers God service. And these things they will do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things I have told you that when the time comes you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I did not say to you at the beginning because I was with you. But now I go away to him who sent me. And none of you asked me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Verse 7, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, says Jesus. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come... He will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine. And declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he will take care of mine and declare it to you. Let's go back to verse 13. However, when he, the spirit of truth, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. Now this happened in the book of Acts. This is written in the book of John. And the book of Acts is next. And so he's talking about when he ascends to the Father, he's going to send the helper, the Holy Spirit. And that's when he told them to go tarry in that upper room until they be endued with power from on high, the Holy Spirit and fire. However, when he, the Spirit of truth or the Holy Spirit, has come, he will guide you into all truth. How much truth do we want? How much truth do you want? Do you want just a little bit of truth? Do you want mixture with your truth? Do you want part lie, part truth? Do you want part counterfeit spirit and part true Holy Spirit? Or do you want all truth? The Lord says here that the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, will guide us into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. That means he doesn't just do his own thing. He gets his wisdom from the Holy Father and the Lord Yeshua Jesus. And then he imparts it to the disciples of Yeshua Jesus. Whatever he hears the Holy Father and Yeshua saying, he will speak to us. And it says next that he will tell us things to come. Now remember in Acts chapter 2, 
He said that he's going to pour out his spirit on all flesh and our sons and our daughters shall prophesy. When you're moving in the prophetic, the Lord is usually telling you things to come or things about a person or great encouragement to share with a person or a warning or a correction or a comfort or a counsel. And right here he's saying this is one of the fruits, one of the works, one of the benefits of having the Holy Spirit is that he will tell us things to come. And he will glorify Jesus. If you hear someone trying to prophesy and they're not glorifying Jesus, but they're only glorifying themselves or their own ministry, it's probably not true prophecy. Because the true Holy Spirit will take care of what is the Lord's and declare it to us. He will tell you things to come. This is a promise. This is a promise. So when the Lord makes us a promise, we can go back and say, Lord, this is right here in John chapter 16. You said... That when you give me the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, he guides me into all truth. And he does not speak on his own authority, but he says what he hears from you, Holy Father Yahweh and Yeshua. And then he will speak to me and tell me things to come. If you're not hearing from the Holy Spirit, then get really still. Repent of your sins, known and unknown. Get everything out of the way. Ask the Lord to cleanse your heart and give you ears to hear the Holy Spirit. The ears to hear the Holy Spirit. Remember in Revelation when he addresses all those churches. He's dealing with the churches. That's what's going on right now. He's dealing with the churches. He said, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Holy Spirit's saying to the churches. We have physical ears. Most all of us all have two ears on the outside of our, of our head. But not all of us are tuned into being able to hear with an ear of the Holy Spirit what he is saying and this world and the enemy and flesh and our own desires and distractions and cares of life they have tried to take our attention away from what the Holy Spirit is saying and so we need to get still we need to repent of our sins we need to get very still and focus on listening remember he said that he who has an ear let him hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the churches and here again in John 16 13 he says whatever he hears he will speak and he will tell you things to come now, a lot of us want to know what's going to happen, what's going to happen, what's going to happen, what about this, what about that, what about this person, what about that person, what should I do, what am I supposed to do, what am I supposed to do, that's an anxiety, and you need to be still, you need to be still, you need to be in, in the calmness of the Lord, ask him to help you, ask him to still your heart, your mind, ask him to give you calm, peace, his peace, in your mind, in your spirit, in your soul, in your body, in your heart. Refuse the anxiety. He said, be anxious for nothing. That's in Philippians 4. That's a commandment. Be anxious for nothing, but by prayer and supplication, make our requests known to the Lord with thanksgiving. And then the peace that passes all understanding will keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. You see, that's conditional. We have to do our part. 
So if you want the Holy Spirit to speak to you, ask him to help you open your ears, the ears of your spirit, to hear the Holy Spirit, to hear what he's telling the body of Christ about things to come. If you are worried about many things like such as Martha or the five foolish virgins and they were just lazy and careless and procrastinating and not taking uh, the coming of the Lord seriously and, and they just weren't ready. If that's your condition or condition of someone in your family, you just have to be still. The Lord said, be still and know he is God. He will be exalted in the nations. He will be exalted in the earth. He will tell us things to come. And again, he says, Verse 13, however, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. All truth. All truth. just part of the truth. You see, the Bible has many things to say, and we need to know the whole gospel, the whole word, so that we can live a balanced life and have righteous judgment and discernment, righteous wisdom, godly, holy wisdom, not the wisdom of the world, not the wisdom of our own mind. Not the wisdom of uh, just reasonings like they taught in school. Two and two is four or probabilities. Everybody has an opinion, but who cares? Your opinion's probably not right compared to God's wisdom. So find God, Yahweh's wisdom. Your opinions can get you in trouble and going the wrong way. Your desires, if not led by the Holy Spirit, if they are not the will of Yahweh, will get you into trouble and going the wrong way. We must be able to hear the whole truth and be guided into all truth. Don't you like the sound of that? I love the sound of that, of knowing all truth, not just a little part, not just an appetizer, not just a little salt, but the whole meal, every course and dessert, the whole truth of the matter. We must be still. I believe this is what the Holy Spirit is teaching us tonight. We must be still. Take a pen. Take a tablet of paper. Don't take your phone. Because if you got your phone on and you're making notes on your phone, then texts could come in, calls could come in, uh, stuff could pop up as a distraction, and you don't want that. Plus, you just want to get away from the phone, you know? I mean, there's like radio waves and all kinds of stuff going on. Just put it away. Turn it on airplane or turn it off. Put it in another room. Go get alone with your Holy Father by yourself. Shut the door and seek His voice. And ask Him to give you all 
of the truth on the matters that he is desiring for you to know. Right here is the promise. You can put your finger on it and say, Father, you promised me right here that you will tell me things to come. That you will give me all truth and guide me into all truth. This is what I want, Lord. I want this clear reception of the spirit of truth. Your Holy Spirit of truth, Father Yahweh. I want clear clarity and ability to hear the voice of my good shepherd Jesus and the voice of a stranger I will not hear nor follow is my decree in the almighty name of Jesus therefore I will not be deceived in these end times but I will be a glory to the Lord by the grace and power of the Lord Jesus Christ. For the Holy Spirit has the job of taking care of what is the Lord's. He said he's going to take care of what is mine. That's us. We're his. When we're born again, we're children of the Lord. When we've repented and asked forgiveness of our sins and we're following the Lord Jesus as Lord, not just uh, fire insurance, but as truly Lord, making ourselves purified as he is pure and being a ready bride, wise in his wisdom. We are his own. And he will tell us things to come. You should not be relying on prophetic people or circles or churches or words or videos from people that say they are prophets. You should not be relying on that. You should be able to hear the Holy Spirit for yourself. And if you hear a true prophet, then it confirms what Holy Spirit has already shown you. That is the only way that you will not be deceived in these end times. You must know the word of God to be able to discern the spirits. And you must be able to hear the voice of the good shepherd Jesus, Yeshua. And know the difference between the strange voice and the holy voice of Jesus, the good shepherd. You see, the shepherd is the guide. If you're not following the good shepherd, then you're being misguided. Or you're down in a pit. Remember here back in verse 13, he will guide you into all truth. The good shepherd guides us into all truth. How much truth do you want? You see, the devil mixes a little bit of truth with a lie to get people to eat it. That's what happened with Eve. That's what happened with so many that have fallen. He mixes a little bit of truth with the lie or the flesh or a promise of something in the carnal, the natural, the demonic or the flesh. And he mixes it together. That's why there's so much mixture in other religions and mixture in New Age theology. Because that's how Satan works. He wants to mix the truth with a lie to deceive people. Because he knows if it sounds a little bit good, then it could provoke people's hunger and interest to listen to him more and eat what he has to offer. But it's always going to be poison. Every, everything from the enemy is poison. It'll never turn out right, ever, unless you repent and run away and run back to Jesus. You must have all truth, not just a little bit. You must have all truth, not just a little bit. Remember the virgins the parable of the ten virgins in Matthew. The five foolish virgins had a little bit of truth. 
They were waiting on the bridegroom. They were believing he was going to come, probably, maybe. They wanted to go, but they didn't have the whole truth. They either didn't know or didn't care that they had to have their light, their lamps trimmed and burning, their oil in their lamps to make the journey. And they couldn't borrow off of those around them. They were supposed to have their own. And so they didn't have the whole truth of the matter. They were deceived or they were lazy, which is still deception. And so they could not go. And even though they ran out to get oil at the last moments, it was too late. Even though they wanted to go and it made an effort to go, it was too late. Once the door is shut, it's shut. That's the way it was on the ark that Noah built. Once God shut that door, it was shut and no one could open it. It was too late. Once the door has been shut, and the bridegroom has his bride, and they're sitting down to the marriage feast, it's too late for anyone else to get in. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Holy Spirit says to the churches. What is he saying? He wants to tell you of things to come. He wants to tell you the whole truth of the matter. A lot of people have been talking about famine, famine of food, famine of food. We better store up food, store up food. And that, that may be so, but I haven't heard anyone. Maybe there are some out there, but I haven't heard anyone yet saying, watch out for a famine of the word. Watch out for mixture. Watch out for an absolute famine of the truth. The whole truth in the end times. You know, you can feed your belly with beans and rice and canned foods and yummy stuff you've stored up and hoarded up and you know, you've, you've stocked up and you, you've got enough food for a year or maybe two or three or four or five. And you think you are just got it all together. But if you're not sowing into the kingdom and you're not winning souls and you're not spending enough time with God and you're not right with God and all you're doing is going around panicking about the end times and learning how to live off the land and hoarding up and, and not spending your money anywhere except on yourself, for your future security, you are not secure at all. Not at all. That's like the five foolish virgins. They, they, they wanted to go. They probably had food. It didn't say they were hungry. They didn't have the fire. They didn't have the oil of the Holy Spirit. They, didn't, they were not acquainted with the holy oil the Holy Spirit. They were void of it, had very little in their lamp. Did not make preparation for that. The most important thing you can have is being able to hear the voice of the Lord. Now, Elijah went to that widow woman's house when there was a famine. God didn't tell him to stock up. Now, he did tell Joseph to stock up. There is different situations, and there's nothing wrong with stocking up if the Holy Spirit truly told you to stock up, and you should follow on what to stock up on as well. Not just anything. But the point is, Elisha went to this widow's house, and he was hungry. And there was a famine. She didn't have anything stored up, but God did. And because she obeyed God and feared God and made him a cake, her and her son lived through that famine with bread and oil every day and every night. And so did Elijah. 
You see, obedience is what God's looking for. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And mercy triumphs over judgment. The best thing to stock up on is the oil, the light, the fire, the Holy Spirit, the Word of God in your heart. Have it so overflowing in you, you can teach it, you can preach it, you can evangelize. You can lay hands on the sick and they recover because of your faith in Jesus' name. When you pray for the sick in Jesus' name and they get healed. And you don't need a doctor for yourself because you walk in your authority and you don't allow the devil to give you an infirmity. You take authority over it. You rebuke it. You cast it down and out. You will not receive it. You don't tolerate it. And if you already have one, Stop tolerating it. Stop listening to everything going on about the situation and listen to God's word and believe him and rebuke the infirmity out of your body or out of your loved one's body with authority in the name of Jesus. Every evil work is from Satan and you have authority as a child of God. The Bible says that you have authority over snakes and scorpions, over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm you. If you start feeling bad, don't go around saying, oh, I'm getting sick, I'm getting sick, I'm sick. Well, if you do that, that's what you're going to get. Because your words and your belief system and your faith is very geared to create what you're saying. That's why we're not supposed to speak the circumstances of what we see. We're supposed to walk by faith and not by sight. That's how you get miracles. That's how miracles happened. Is because they believed God instead of what they saw. Or what they felt. Or what somebody else said or did. They still trusted God. God that is true faith and the fear of God you need to welcome the fear of God and say Lord it doesn't matter what I feel like or what I want it's not my will but yours be done I love and fear you God I want you to have your way show me your will show me your way because when we have his will and his way, it will work out right. And when we don't, it won't. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Holy is his name. Holy is the name of the Lord. Holy is the name of the Lord. It's already been pretty uh, nasty nothing pretty about it it's just my southern way of talking um, it's really nasty about what has been in some of the churches in these end times David Wilkerson even prophesied of uh, a lot of these things that we're seeing now and some of the other great men and women of God also warned us that these times would come You're not to trust leaders who are people. You are to trust Jesus and the Holy Father God. People can fail. People can stumble. People can sin. 
but Jesus cannot. Get to know Jesus. Quit worrying about being accepted by a crowd or a person or known or greatly known or uh, fame or fortune in, in ministry or churches. Stop it. Stop the performance. Stop the fear of man. Stop the fear of rejection. And know that you're accepted. If you're a child of Yahweh, you're already accepted. And that is all that matters. To know him and make him known is all that matters. When you have his approval, and what does it take to get Father God's approval? He said, without faith, it's impossible to please him. So therefore, he's telling us we must have faith in order to please God. Faith, trust in him, his word. His name, his promises. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's what he was saying in John 16. Listen for him. Listen. He will guide you into all truth. Hearing, your hearing has to be finely tuned to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit will always agree with the Word of God. He does not go off on his own thing. He does not go off, it said it right there in John 16, he will not speak on his own authority. Therefore, if somebody comes to you saying, an angel told me this, or I heard this from Holy Spirit, and it doesn't line up with the Word of God, it is false. I don't care if it's your very best friend and they had a dream three nights in a row. But if it's different from what the Word of God says, don't believe it. If it hurts your friend's feelings or offends them, they don't want to be your friend anymore, it's better to lose them than to be deceived. And you can go pray for them to come out of deception. But don't go along with it. Don't go along with some ministry that has maybe uh, hundreds of thousands of followers or even millions. If it's false, it's false. It doesn't matter how many people like it or is there at that church or follows that ministry. It does not matter. Jesus said, if you love me, they will hate you. The world will hate you. If you love the real Jesus and you're following the real Jesus and doing what the real Jesus, Yeshua, is commanding you to do by his real word, the world will hate you because it hated him. And a lot of people are teaching love, 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 love but no truth. And they're out of balance. And it's deceiving people. Because you can't go around preaching love, 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 and no truth. Jesus came and gave us grace, love, and truth. The truth is we need to repent. The truth is we need to obey God. He said, if you love me, you will obey me. That's what he said. And how can you obey him if you don't know what he wants? If you don't know the word of God and you're not going to a church that really teaches the truth from the lie and black and white and good and, and uh, the, the difference to know the difference between good and evil, holy and unholy. If they're mixing it all together and they're saying, oh, love is love. That's a false love movement. True love will tell you the truth. That's what the true Jesus, that's what the true word of God does. He, he has boundaries of commandments. They're not suggestions. They're commandments. They're not encouragements for you to have a, a better life or more prosperity or look or feel better. They are commandments of a living, holy, almighty God. Who has the power to throw you into hell if you do not repent 
and you do not live a life that is truly making him Lord and choosing to obey him. When you mess up, do you have grace? If you repent of it, you'd absolutely have grace, even that very instant. But don't tread on the grace of God. Don't use it as a license for sin. Reverence Him, honor Him, fear Him, love Him, adore Him, obey Him, and stay far from sin. If you have a besetting sin, if you're struggling with something, go be alone with Jesus. Go be alone with Holy Father and talk to them about it like your best friend. I guarantee you they will speak to you and deliver you from it. I guarantee it. Because that's their will. When you humble yourself and repent of your sin, no matter what it is, you take that to God through, the, through Jesus by the Holy Spirit revealing that to you, they will forgive you. Jesus and Father God will forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness and remove it as far as the east is from the west and remember it no more. And then you just ask Him to give your ears fine tuning, fine tuning to hear His voice, the finest tuning He's got. I want to encourage you to ask for that. The finest tuning he's got for your spiritual ears to be open to what he wants to tell you. What is the Holy Spirit saying to the church right now? It may not be what you think it is. It may not be what the uh, videos on YouTube are saying and the so-called some people calling themselves prophets or say it may not be that it may be part of that it may not be any of that you need to go find out for yourself for yourself what is my father Yahweh telling me that is what is of value and remember you must know the word so that when you hear it it has to line up with the word or you didn't hear right Okay? You didn't hear right if it doesn't line up with the word. Hallelujah. So tonight the Holy Spirit is saying, we'll just put this in a little closing nutshell here. To ask him to fine tune your ears to hear his holy voice, his Holy Spirit. To know his word and to discern his Holy Spirit voice. And know his word well enough to know, is it in the word? Know how to use your Bible. Go find it. If you don't know if it's in there, know how to go find it. Use your references. Get alone with the Lord in private. Shut the door. Do not take your phone in the room. Do not do this around a computer. Shut it off. Shut off all tech. Love God enough. Do not be idolatrous with tech, okay? I'm sure God is so tired of that. I'm sure of it. So tired of it. Don't provoke the Lord. Don't pretend to have, to let him have your attention when he really does not have your full attention. He knows the difference. Give him your full attention. You know, he calls us children for a reason. It's for good. And also, the reality of a child is, sometimes their attention spans aren't very long. And you've got to keep their attention. They have to purpose to pay attention. That's one of the biggest challenges that teachers have in school, is to keep the student's attention. Be a good student of the word. Be a good student of the Holy Spirit speaking and give him your full attention. Take your pen, take your notebook and write down what he says. And make sure you're going to go find it in the word of God to make sure it's really truly the Holy Spirit and you're not being deceived by a counterfeit spirit. Remember, what you hear prophets saying or prophetesses saying will only be a confirmation of what you hear the true Holy Spirit telling you. 
You should not run from prophet to prophet, video to video, da 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 da, da seeking a word, wondering what's going on, because you don't have time, because you're trying to make money, or you're trying to do this, that, and the other, and you don't have time to get along with God for yourself. That's what happened to them five foolish virgins. They didn't take the time to go get their own oil. And they thought they could borrow from other people. But it didn't turn out good for them, did it? So you better go get your own oil. And that's the way to do it. Getting alone with God. Getting in the word. A lot. A lot. A lot. Not just a little bit. If you have a full-time work schedule, then you're going to have to find your allot prayer time either in the evenings or early in the mornings or both. When you have your lunch time at work, get refreshed in the Word again in prayer. Find a place to go. The Lord again says that friendship with the world is enmity against God. If you only long to have a bunch of friends and be accepted... You are probably harboring in your heart some hatred or at least rebellion against God. Because when you truly are following the real Jesus and you want to be holy because he's holy and you want to purify yourself even as he is pure, you think about, you find out about how pure he is and you govern your life that way and your conduct and what you do and what you don't do, what you say and what you don't say. And if you mess up, you repent. But you earnestly repent and ask the Lord to change you. You don't just keep doing it. The Bible's not a self-help encouraging book. It's the Word of God. It's not a suggestion. It's a black and white book telling you what's right and wrong and the commandment is to do the right. And there's consequences if we do wrong. Grave, evil, horrible consequences. We love you, Jesus. We love your word. We thank you tonight for revealing these truths to us and nailing them, hammering them home in our hearts. Amen. We ask that the fear of you, Father Yahweh, overtake our heart and that we truly be children that obey you and have extra finely tuned spiritual ears to hear your holy voice, holy spirit of truth and be able to hear what is to come and to hear all truth, the whole truth and what the Holy Spirit is saying to the churches in this time. For ourselves, holy is the name of God. Remember, if you're seeking a prophetic word, if you're looking on YouTube and you may hear bits and pieces or big numbers behind somebody's name or their videos, that does not mean they're a true prophet. If they're not living a life of purity, faithfulness to God, if they're married, if they're not faithful to their spouse, they are false. They are in grave sin. They are not to be listened to. They are not to be trusted. Because why would you want to listen to somebody calling themselves a prophet when they're in deception? How can you think that they're speaking to you truth if they're not even living in truth? If they're being deceived and in sin, how can that help you? That is a poisonous mixture it's a poisonous meal that if you eat it and you drink it you become sick spiritually and you don't want that so you seek the ones who are living holy pure repentative humble lives faithful to god faithful they don't have a reputation of you know having lots of lovers I don't care how many people they've had following them, how many big names they've run around with. It does not matter to God, and it should not matter to you. Yes, we are to forgive them. Yes, we are to have mercy. Yes, we are to have grace. But we are not to follow 
people who are in sin. Now, how do you know the difference between the true and the false prophet if, you're don't, if you don't know them and you don't see their lives and you don't know the behind-the-scenes life they're living? Well, I'll tell you how you know. It's by discernment of the Holy Spirit. There's been people that we've not known, but we look at them on TV or on YouTube or something, and this has happened more than once, and the Holy Spirit will say no. Do not eat. Do not drink of that person. And sure enough, it wasn't long after that they uh, revealed their own sin publicly that they were being unfaithful to their husband or wife. You see, Holy Spirit will protect you, but you got to know his voice. you got to know his voice. It's so important. And that's not my job for you. That's your job for you. We love you in the Lord. Please join us tomorrow night. Uh, usually we have a lot of worship and singing and, and uh, prayer, singing our prayers and, and things like that. But tonight the Lord did a lot of teaching, and he does that sometimes. Hallelujah. And so we're thankful, Lord. If there's anybody out there who needs to make Jesus the Lord of your life, it's so simple. Just say right now, just say, Jesus, will you forgive me of my many sins, known and unknown? I hate them. I want a new life. I want you, Jesus, to have your way in my life. I want forgiveness. I want a new start. I want to be born again. The Bible says you must be born again. And so you say, Lord, I want to be born again. I do believe in you, Jesus. I do believe you died for my sins. I do believe you were resurrected on the third day. I believe you're the son of God. I believe that you created this beautiful world and me and you love me. And I want you to take over my life. I want a new, I want a new life. I want a second chance or maybe you're on your third, fourth, fifth, or sixth, or seventh. I don't know. But Lord, will you save me? Forgive me. Cleanse me. Take out this carnal, evil, sinful behavior and spirit and put in me a holy spirit. And cause my ears, my spiritual ears, to be so finely tuned that I can hear your voice. Good shepherd Jesus. And Holy Spirit, this is what I desire most of all, is to hear your voice. I love you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And you know Jesus loves you, died for you. So die to your sin and follow him. You'll never regret it. He's the only way, the truth, the life, and the way. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Beautiful teaching. Anointed. I love when my wife teaches. She does it so well. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glories to the Lord. Amen. Thank you all for partnering with us financially and in your prayers too. Thank you very much. God bless you. We'll be back tomorrow night at uh, 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Yes. Eastern, Eastern Standard Time. Yes. Amen. And bring your friends and family. Amen. Invite. Thank you. Evangelize. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We love you all in the Lord. Bless you. We appreciate you tuning in with us. Uh, there's a lot more music that's free and uh, worship and teachings and preachings on YouTube. You can go find that with Lily Band Psalmist. Is that right, honey? That's it. Okay. Please remember us in your prayers, your holy prayers. And if the Lord lays on your heart to support this ministry, financially as a monthly supporter or just to give to us uh, you know whenever he lays it on your heart please do that being in ministry costs money and we we happen to really need a lot of financial support right now and so if the lord is speaking to you please obey him you'll be blessed in obeying him amen amen love you all you welcome you Holy, holy, holy Lord. Holy, holy, holy Lamb. Holy Lamb. And fully, holy, holy Lamb. Freedom. Holy, holy, holy Lamb. Of your freedom. Holy, holy, holy Lamb. Freedom of your will flow.
your wonders in my body. Welcome your wonders in my body. Welcome your wonders in my body. Welcome these healing in my body. Welcome your healing in my body. Welcome your healing in my body. Welcome your healings in my body. Welcome your This body of mine 